Hi guys, it's Kelly here and I am back with another video. Today's video is extra exciting because it is part of a video hop for a collaboration between Altenew and Picket Fence Studio. So I happen to love both those companies. I love any companies that are supporting each other. So super excited. Um, I'm going to be using the Ghosts from Halloween's Past. That's the stamp, the stamp set. Um, and then the Flying High Witch and the Haunted Moon stencil. And then, of course, my stamp wheel. This isn't new to you guys. If you watch my channel, you can see how well-loved my, uh, my little uh, sticky mat is. So here, this moon comes with a... Um, what is it? A mask. It comes with its own mask. And so I am just using a little bit of Tombow Mono Multi Glue, which dries repositionable. I'm putting it toward the edges and then I'm just kind of smearing it out with my finger so that it makes uh, just a nice thin layer that will remain tacky. But that's only because it's not, that's the part that's not going to touch my sticky mat. The rest of it, like all the stencil parts that will touch my sticky mat, will actually hold my stencil in place. Here in a minute, you're going to see me use some painter's tape to um, put on top of it. This is not to hold the stencil in place. The sticky mat does that all on its own. This is merely just to give myself a little bit more protection as I'm going in and inking my moon so that I don't get it on the background where I don't want it. I'm using Distress Oxides for my moon. Um, I did like a warmer, like a warm gray for my moon. Um, and so I did want to put down just a little bit um, of color for the full circle of that. I used, what did I use? Well, you just saw it on the screen, but I don't remember what it was. Uh, I think it was pumice stone, honestly. It is, <laughs> now that it's back again. Um, and then for the next layer, like, so I just scooted it over. This time you can see I don't need to use the um, masking tape because I'm not going to get that close to the edges. I am just, it's just being held by the sticky mat, which is honestly my favorite way to use the stamp wheel and the sticky mat. So in order to make it a little bit more warm, I am going to add in some antique linen. I'm being super light-handed with my um, brushes from Picket Fence. Um, and these, just because I had such a large surface area to cover, these just made the most sense to me. Uh, and then I will go in with the third layer, and the third layer will just be the antique linen. It won't be a combination. Before we get too much further into the card, let me just give you the heads up that there's tons of giveaways going on. I think Alta News giving away like five $25 gift certificates, and Picket Fence is giving away five $75 gift certificates. So just make sure as you're hopping along, you're leaving some comments for the designers because that's how you're going to win. And then um, Alta New will announce the winner on their page, I think in like a week on, oh, let me look, on the 20th. Um, so you got a little bit of time to hop along. Um, you have until the 17th to enter. So 10, 10 days, 10 days to get through all the videos in the hop. So now that we have the moon done, I'm going to go in and I'm still using the oxides because they're softer. Oxides have like a chalkier finish. Um, and so it makes a little bit of a softer black. And so I'm starting with that um, and putting my little witch down in place. We are going to come back and re-ink this and I'll explain that when we get there. Um, but then from there, I'm going to put my mask in place for my moon so that I can do my background. The title of this video, how to make your nighttime scenes glow. There's a lot of different ways we can do that. The first one is, which we have already done with the moon, is having a light source in your, um, in your actual scene. So this one is a very large light source. You can tell I'm also making a slim line card. Um, but to have that light source, the second way is to create a halo effect. So here I'm going in. These are my picket fence pouncers. I am going to end up using my brushes, but the picket fence pouncers are a great way to get a lot of color down really fast. And so it's going to save me a ton of time laying down ink with the brushes because the brushes, ought to, they have a softer application, which has its own place. But I want this to be a dark kind of spooky scene. So now that I have my base layer down, now I can go in with my brushes. I'll be able to blend out that bottom so that it's a nice soft transition into my ground and still be building up color um, over top uh, into my sky. 
You could do this sky any color that you wanted. I chose a pinkish purple because I knew with my focal point, my witch being um, silhouetted, the, the only color I was going to get was going to be from my sky and my ground. So I went bold with both um, because the items in the scene set the scene and give it the vibe, but they're not going to be the most colorful thing because of the backlighting technique. So we talked about doing a halo, which all that means is your lightest color is around your object. So in this case, this is my light source. So the closer you get to the light source, the more light there's going to be, the further away, the darker it's going to be. So that's why you see as I'm building up these colors that I'm leaving still that light pink halo around the moon because it should be lightest there. You could even leave a little bit of white around it. Um... And that would also be okay. I took my color right up to it because I'm doing a slimline card, which means I have very limited real estate around my moon. And then the other way that you're going to help your glow is you have to put in shadows. You have to put in darks to make those lights pop. So even though I worked all the way out to my darkest purple, which was Villainous Potion, which is a very dark purple, I still went in with black. Um, and the distressing black, not, or not the oxide, because the oxide's softer. I want a dark, bold black. And then, just to blend everything together, I went back in with uh, my picked raspberry and just did a once-over. Cleaned everything up. Now I'm going to scoop my slimline up, and I'm going to do the grasses. For the grasses, again, I'm going to start with my pouncer so that I can put down a good amount of color right out the gate. This seems really light, but we have to have that lighter transit, like that lightness in the background to help it look like there is light hitting the ground. Uh, it needs to, to create that glow. You have to have a, that little bit of lighter um, sectioning at the back. Then again, I went in with my brushes. Now I'm going to start building this up so that it's darker in the foreground, lighter in the background. So it looks like that moonlight is hitting this graveyard. Um, Okay, a lot of other things we're going to do too. Now, before you're like, Kelly, you said that this was beginner friendly. Um, it is beginner friendly. <laughs> it is. You don't have to do all of these, okay? This is how I put together my card, but maybe one of them isn't for you or one of them seems like it's it's extra and so you're not interested in that. That's totally fine. Using any one of these techniques will start to give your card more of a glow than not using it. So you can use one or two of them. You could use all of them. You just pick and choose the ones that you like. So now that we have the bottom where I'm happy with how it's blended, we're going to do another thing to kind of give it this glow, which is to add lots of dimension, shimmery dimension. So in the Flying High Witch, there is also a mask. So I just laid that in place. The the furthest point, the most dimensional stars are going to be made with just clean water because distress inks work with water. It's going to kind of bleach out those spots, but it's not going to be super in your face about it. It's just going to be very subtle. Next, we're going to add more stars with perfect pearls. So I'm going to mix in a little bit of water with just a little bit of this powder, perfect pearls bind with water. And then I'm just going to use my hand to block the grasses because I don't want it to get on the grass since I am creating like stars. If you were creating more of like a ethereal kind of spooky forest vibe, I would have done the grass too. So now we've got the perfect pearls. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in this all to new iridescent shimmer spray. The Perfect Pearls has a white shimmer. This has like a pinkish purple shimmer. And I'm going to spray it from up top really high, like probably a good 12 to 16 inches away from my project. And I'm just going to spray two quick sprays. Some of it will be some splatter, but there will be a lot of mist too. And that mist is going to give us this really shimmery, glowy effect. Last but not least, we're going to do some stars with some white acrylic paint. So I have a pretty coarse brush here. 
This actually, this brush was one that I got in like a cheap kid set uh, that was for my son, but it works great for this. So you just want a coarser brush. And then I'm just going to pick up a little bit of that watered down acrylic paint and I'm going to spatter it onto my background. Because it is acrylic paint, it's going to be a bit more opaque and give us some bright white stars. If you don't want to do this or this is too messy, alternatively, you could go in with a white gel pen and just pencil in your own stars. So now, here's the big reveal, right? Uh, look how pretty that moon is, and it looks like it's glowing. Yay! That's the goal. Um, but please do make sure you wipe off your stencils and um, clean them up, so that way they're not getting stained. So now, I'm going to go back. Now that everything is done, it's dry, I'm not putting my stencil over wet spatters. Now I'm going to go back in and use Distress Ink instead of Oxides, and this time I'm keeping it kind of down and to the left so that the Oxide, which is a bit lighter, is still shining through up and to the right, but the rest of it is super dark and opaque. Speaking of super dark and opaque, let's get on to the stamping. You might be asking yourself, Kelly, if you were creating a one-layer card, why, oh why, did you not mask these things? With this technique, it's unnecessary. Um, and I don't like, I don't particularly love fussy cutting. Alternatively, if you didn't want to do it as a one layer card, there are dies available for this, but I love a one layer scene. So now that I have all of my stamps in place, you will notice that part of my card is hanging out of my stamp wheel. It did not affect my stamping whatsoever. Uh, I had no issues with it getting stamped. The only trouble I ran into was because these are new stamps, it would sometimes like pick up my paper. Um, I probably need to, to wipe down my uh, sticky mat so I can get it sticky back. Um, that is one of the things that's nice about it because it's made from photopolymer. Like you just wash it, let it dry, air dry, and it gets it sticky back. I'm also using Obsidian Ink from Altenew, which is the blackest black I have ever used. And and I love it. So I stamp those down. Now I'm just going to add in just to, I move my card down. I'm going to add in a few more bats. So kind of like they're flying up and out of the graveyard around our cute little witch. There's various sizes of bats. You'll want the bigger ones to be closer to you. So closer to the graveyard and the smaller ones to be up at the top. So further away. Now let's do some shading. These are the warm grays in the Altenew Artist markers. And basically for backlighting, you guys have seen me do this technique before, and it's been a it's been a while. Um, so now, especially that we're getting into the spooky season, you know, we'll have to revisit it. But pretty much when you're adding your things that are going to be backlit, you have to look at your light source. So the moon is in the center. We could absolutely do this as a center highlight, which means the middle of your object would be darkest and it would have highlights on both the left and right hand side. But because the moon is up above and my tree is slightly to the left, I am going to zoom all of my highlights on the right hand side because that's where the light is going to hit the tree. So I'm still going to have the darks in the center but there's also going to be darks on the bottom of the branches because the moon is higher than the tree. So it's casting its light down. So that's where I'm going in and I'm adding the majority of my shading. Same thing with my little gravestones, my little headstones here. The moon is up above. So this one is directly in the middle. There, it, the light isn't coming from the left or the right. It's coming from directly up above it. So all of its shading, like its darkest points, are going to be in the middle, and there'll be highlights on the left and right-hand side. For this little guy over here, he is canted to the right, which means his highlights will be on the top left. This will make more sense when we start to put the highlights in, but it's also what I pay attention to when I'm adding my shading. So view your light source as like a sun and how its rays would come out. Follow those imaginary rays to where the light would hit your objects. Or if you need the actual visual, cut yourself some triangle rays just out of copy paper um, and lay them down so you could see where the light would hit. Now, once I'm done putting down the shadows, I'm just going to go in and I'm going to fill it in with the next, I think I showed you five markers. I actually only ended up using, I think, a W9, a W7, a W5 in the black. I haven't used the black yet. Don't worry, you didn't miss it. So 
The reason I haven't used the black yet is right now I'm just showing you with the grays. These are warmer grays. That makes sense with the moon that we have going on. And I'm going to work out to that, that W5, and I'll be filling everything in with the W5. The Ulta New Artist Markers have a brush nib, but they also have a bullet. And let me just go ahead and tell you, <laughs> for items like this, like this little tree where there's all these skinny little branches, or in between the section on um, one of the head, this headstone here, the little bullet nib, lifesaver. So much easier to get in there. And I'm not usually a person who uses anything other than a brush nib, but I was kind of grateful to have it this time around. So now this is how it looks before the black is in. I know it's scary. I know coloring with black is scary. I know coloring with darks is scary. But I want you to watch and see the difference of adding the blacks in, adding a true black shadow, and how it just makes that dimension go from like, hey, to hey. Like, it makes a huge difference. And I'm just following the same lines. Like, if you're nervous about the blacks, do what I did. To start with the grays and then go in and add your blacks. Am I going to go back in with one of my gray midtones and kind of blend this all out? Yes, I will go back over it. But if it's really super scary, then just start with the grays and then go back and do your blacks. But can you see how this tree now is really starting to come to life? I mean, well, it looks dead, but... <laughs> is coming alive in our card. <laughs> um, and then so here, I'm just going to go back in with those grays, blend those out. It will lighten the black just slightly, but not enough that it's, you know, terribly noticeable. Um, so yeah, just don't, don't be scared. It's so worth it. It's really going to make your card glow when you put in that backlighting. So for the grasses, again, I'm just using three colors. I'm starting with my darkest. It's going to be the darkest closest to us and then get lighter as it moves out toward that kind of open graveyard area, that kind of where the, the horizon, where the, the graveyard meets the sky. One of the other things I did here, again, you could totally skip this. It's just something that adds a little extra is I did put in the shadows of the... Um, items here. The two gravestones, pretty easy because they're closer. So that gravestone to the right, its shadow will be cast down and to the right because the light source is in the top left. For the one in the middle, just come straight out in front of it. For the trees, you can take some creative license there um, because you're just really going to do kind of like some longer lines, some squiggles that will look like the branches. I did the shadows first, and then I went through and did my little grasses out to this, you know, open lighted area. And then I did go back in once the rest of the coloring was done and do just the shadows portion so that that was sitting on top and would be slightly darker and noticeable. I could have done it with the grays as well, but I thought that the greens worked well enough. So now here here is where we really make the glow happen, this backlighting happen. And it's your white gel pen, okay? I use a number 10 jelly roll. You use whatever makes you happy. If you have one that you like, you got a Signo, you got something else that makes you happy, use it. So what I'm doing is I'm going to go in and I'm going to lay down just some kind of like skippy lines of white gel pen. And then I'm going to just pat it with my finger. This keeps it from being this like, garish, ostentatious white highlight. That's not what we're going for and turns it into a bit softer. It kind of smushes it out a little and blends it in and it makes the whole thing like really come together. Like these things are picking up the light. It's hard to see with the witch and the bats because there is no contrast you know what I'm saying? Like, there's contrast between the witch and the moon, but once you put the highlight in, there's really no contrast between the moon and the highlight. You can see it much, much better in these darker areas with the trees. And so, again, I'm adding my highlights the same way that I added my shading. The highlights are going on the top because that's where the light is going to hit it. So this tree is down to the bottom left. Its highlights will be up to the top right. And that is how I'm going to add them. This pen will start to kind of like build up on your finger as you're patting it. It dries almost immediately, so you're not going to be 
spreading any ink. Um, and then just, you know, use a baby wipe or wash your hands afterward and it'll come right off. It's not permanent. Um, not on your fingers anyway. So just going to go through here, do the same thing, all the little uh, branches, get highlights, uh, the thick ones and the thin ones. The more highlights you can get in there, the more uh, glowy and realistic that that is going to look for your card. Once the tree is done, I'm going to move on. I'm going to do the same thing to the headstones. Um, and again, this one's in the middle. So the highlights are going to be on the top and then both the left and right hand side. Any areas that are kind of like sticking out for this gravestone, the highlights are going to be on the top left. But like here, it has a bar that goes across the bottom, you know, like the base of the headstone. But there's not going to be a headlight where it's or a headlight, there's not going to be a highlight where it's not sticking out because the light would block that. So to just in further encourage that glowy feel, we're going to add in just a little bit of shimmer right over their highlights. And then this is the I'm Alive sequin mix from Picket Fence. And um, I'm just going to use these to highlight my little sentiment, which I heat embossed and trimmed into a little label. Um, and then really, that's it. That's the whole card. We didn't even have story time because it was so like we were just racking and rolling and talking about building highlights. Um, so forgive me. I do have stories, but today ain't your day. Um, so yeah, hop along. Enjoy the hop. Thank you guys so much for stopping by. I always appreciate your time and I'll catch you on the next video. Bye.